You are now tuned. Drive time with Bully. <laughs> Being on the radio and being able to broadcast to the world enables me to meet and chat with all walks of life. So it gives me great pleasure to speak to a lady from San Diego who's not only a fan of what we do on Zero Radio, but I've also found out that she also is the driving force behind a fantastic charity organisation. She is the award-winning Angela Brannan Baptiste, moved to San Diego in 1993 after completing your Bachelor of Arts degree, running your own business, and then in 2004 started the It's All About the Kids Foundation. Angela, welcome to Zero Radio. Hello, how are you? Thank you so much for having me. We've sort of spoken on social media, but we've never actually spoken to each other voice to voice, have we? No, it's great to hear your voice, like for me to talk to you, other than just hearing it, you know, online. So uh, thank you so much. This is really cool. Now, if you're wondering, dear listener, what this is all about, this is basically Angela picked up Zero Radio in San, San Diego started listening and liked the music and you was dancing around in the morning, around the bedroom, around the kitchen, getting ready for your day ahead, uh, started messaging in. We got chatting and then suddenly I picked up on a fantastic charity that you're you're involved with. But before we talk about that, San Diego, how's it doing? Because you're quite busy. You're travelling backwards and forwards at the moment, aren't you? Um, well, I have the honour of living both in San Diego and also um, in Massachusetts. Yeah. So I go back and forth quite a lot, but I spend most of my time in San Diego um, because I'm so busy here. Um, our charity is exploding in growth. And so um, I am swamped with work, which is a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing because work is wonderful and I love my job. It also can be kind of sad because that means that more people are in need, more families need us. So it's a double-edged sword. Um, I love Zero Radio. I found you guys on Mixcloud and then started listening and then, of course, started stalking you all on your Facebook pages. <laughs> so, how cool is that? <laughs> right, let's, let's just talk about Angela, first of all. You mentioned that you're really, really working hard at the moment. Uh, I checked you out and you won San Diego Magazine Women of the Year in 2010, 11, 13, 15 and 19. I didn't realise that you were such an important person, Angela. Wow. Well, thank you. I was nominated. So I haven't won one yet, but they keep nominating me. So it's kind of, um, I get excited each year and think, oh, this could be the year that I would win. But I can tell you there's an absolute honor to be nominated. There's probably between uh, 50 to 60 women that are nominated each year out of, you know, there's millions of people who live there in San Diego. So it's an absolute honor honor uh to be in a group so prestigious um i just work hard and i want to make a difference in in the world and i i know i was put on this planet to do something like that and so that's why um i think that i get nominated you mentioned a couple of times in the interview so far that you work hard when you are involved with your foundation what do you do to chill out tell us a little bit about angela what do you do to take time out i travel and lay in the sun (laughs) i love to lay in the sun i love to swim um and then my husband takes me away he takes me on um vacations i of course still work while i'm on vacation because i have one employee that runs our food pantry but i do all the rest of the work for the foundation so it's a little bit of work and chill work and chill work and chill yeah absolutely so like for example we love to go to thailand so because there's a time difference um i'm always 12 hours ahead yeah so it's good for me because husband will go to sleep i'll work for a few hours i'll wake up work for you for a few hours and then he'll wake up and then we have the whole day together now we've spoken about charity we've spoken about foundation uh we're going to talk about that we're sort of heading towards that now but the uk at the moment is going through almost like a similar problem with regards to adult and indirectly child poverty. Tell me, what's what's caused that, particularly in the San Diego area? Well, what's happened here in San Diego is it's expensive to live here. And so what happens is when people rent or they have their house payments, it doesn't matter, all the other bills get paid first because those are bills that have to be paid. So when it comes to the end of your paycheck, then there's only a few dollars left for food. So... They are, the children are not getting enough food at home. And then what happens is the parents sometimes give the food to the children, then the parents are not eating. And that causes a whole other onslaught of problems. So I believe that it's an economic problem. 
I feel that um, things have become more expensive. And then, of course, like for us, the price of gas is at least a dollar higher than the East Coast. Yeah. So when the price of gas fluctuates and the price of gas goes up, then that means the price of fresh vegetables. Anything in the grocery store, the price is going to go up because it gets trucked there. So it's almost Everything like snowballing out of control. One one hit has another one, and one hit affects another hit, yes. and so on and so on. So what we what, let, let, let's talk about the charity. We we were talking about the sort of the the, the problems that are caused towards uh, the food and the, the issues there. Tell us more about the organisation because it goes back to two thousand and four. What made you? start this was this just the whole reason or was this because you wanted to make a change to the world um back in 2003 i quit my job um sitting on my birthday drinking some tequila and decided that's it i'm quitting my job i don't want to work in the corporate world and i don't want to work for anyone any longer i want to start my own charity and i had always been involved in charities and I had been throwing charity fundraisers since 1997 and giving all the money away. Yeah. So I'd been throwing parties. So I decided to my organization called Partying for a Purpose. Um, and then in 2004, a partner came along and he gave me money, gave me $10,000 to start the charity and we took off um, because I just felt that it was in me. I knew that I wanted to do more for the world than just have a job working for a company. Oh, yeah. Drive time with Bully. Somebody in the house say yeah. We need you in Absolutely. the UK, Angela. We need you in the UK. <laughs> well, I would love to come because, um, as I told you online, um, I created the first solar pantry. So because at our location we didn't have any storage, I love shipping containers. So yeah. I'm a problem solver, right? So it's, if I was the government, I would say, that's it. We don't have any storage. We'll just cut it off at 150 families and that's it. Yeah. Make a waiting list. Well, I don't believe in that. That goes against everything that I believe in. So I sat down and I thought, okay, how can I solve my storage problem? Oh, well, I love shipping containers. So <laughs> I thought, well, what if we took a 20-foot shipping container and turned it into a refrigerated storage? So I have learned a long time ago, when you don't know how to do something, you go to the experts. Yeah. So I contacted my friends at the um, Electrical Workers Union and said, what if we put solar on the roof? Will you guys help me do this? So we actually had the help of three different unions here in San Diego. The insulation workers put insulation inside. The iron workers cut a hole in the side of it. And, and then this, this was the, all for free? This is all, they, They're not charging? Yes. Wow. They didn't charge me. And they wow. Actually, the Electrical Workers Union, they actually gave us a $3,000 grant to buy the shipping container and the AC unit that goes inside. So I raised all the money for everything. I, I went to my friends who own big companies and said, this is what we're going to do. Help me. And they all wrote checks. So <clears throat> we have a... 20 foot shipping container that three quarters of it is refrigerated one quarter is dry because that's where the batteries and the inverter have to be held and that's where we keep um, canopies and crates and tables and such um, when the AC unit is turned on because it is attached to an inverter it drops the temperature down to 55 degrees inside so we can store not only our non-perishables inside but we can store counter vegetables and those are vegetables and fruits that can be on the counter so that's oranges apples onions potatoes food wow. that doesn't have to be inside of the refrigerator but it, they need to be cool so we're able to store uh, close to seven thousand pounds of food maybe more than eight thousand pounds of food inside our food cost for our meals went down considerably when we got the, the solar pantry. So what I want to do is find out how we can bring a solar pantry to you in England because you don't need a storefront. You can actually distribute right out of the solar pantry. You just need a parking lot. Tell me a little bit about how, how the charity works because basically you supply food to these children who who where do you get the food where where does that come from how does that work well i raise all the money and we have partnerships with feeding san diego which is a very large food bank and san diego food bank which is another large food bank here where they get 
huge donations from corporations and the farms. Yeah. So what we do is we have partnerships with them. Our manager goes over to the food bank on Wednesdays, picks out the food that we want. Um, up to 10,000, maybe sometimes we've had up to 14,000 pounds of food delivered <laughs> to um, our location where then volunteers come in and we set it up like a store. Um, then our families come in. We started with 30 families. We now have over 700 families on our program. Wow. We have usually about 300, we're up to almost 300 families come through each week. And do and they, they, do they, I'm sorry to butt in, do they, do they buy the food at a reduced rate or do you? No, it's free. So it's, it's absolutely totally free. free. Yes. Um, we don't, we ask questions when they come in. We had, we're paperless. We had an app that was created for us from yep. um, University of San Diego, uh, University of California, San Diego students. They can sign up in less than two minutes and they can check in if they're existing family in less than two seconds. Keep track of them, their zip code so I can write grants, their family sizes, etc. So they come in, they check in, they bring their own bags and then they walk around inside and choose what they want. Can, can, um, they, so can, they, take, can they take as much as they want or as little as they want? They can take as little as they want. We have a, a maximum, like, there'll be a table with canned tomatoes and they can take one. Ah, um, however, we have a policy that if they are in dire need and they need more food, they come to us privately and say, we need more food. And then whatever excess food we have, we give to them. You are now tuned. <laughs> Drive time with Bully. We've spoken a lot yeah. about the, the charity. Now, anyone that's listening to this at the moment... How can we find out how what how can we find out more about it's all about the kids? Um, three different ways. You can go to our website, of course, it has all the information with which is it's all about the kids dot org. Um, we also have a Facebook page, it's all about the kids, and then we're on Instagram, it's all about the kids. Um, tomorrow I am proud to announce we will surpass five hundred thousand meals that we have given out in the first two years of our program. We've run out of time, so I'm going to wish you the the very best of luck. I I don't think I need to, actually, because I'm not surprised you're being nominated for awards because you are changing the world. So thank you for talking to Zero Radio today. Angela Brannan Baptiste. Do not forget that name, dear listener, because she is changing the world. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it so very much. Thank you. You're listening to Drive Time with Bully.